good afternoon to you all. It's really a pleasure to be here. It's such an amazing audience. I see some familiar faces. I've been following these meetups for a while. And, um, but today, I wanted to bring you something a little bit different. Um, I'm a business guy, and I've been working in a job for a while. So, being on the dark side of the force, I, I understood that there are some things that managers uh, develop in their mindset that may be against a job. And so I would like to share those experiences with you. So expect a, a pretty much a business-oriented talk, uh, and so I will not go through all the details uh, that normally you guys like. So, about myself. Um, I was not born a business guy, in fact I'm a computer engineer. So I spent uh, some years of my life developing software and then I shifted my career to management. And since then I've been helping companies to develop innovation. And by this I mean uh, to launch software products into the market, to change the culture, to hire the, 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 the nice guys that can, can make the, the dreams come true. Um, and so during those, those experiences I work a lot with the job and I think Agile and innovation are uh, coupled with, with each other because they leverage uh, one another. So, main topics for discussion today, to share some of these experiences, to share some of the challenges that I faced, to share most of my failures and the lessons learned, also misinterpretations that managers do about Agile, and also some tips that I can give you that may help you in uh, transforming your organization into a job. Hopefully at the end of this you will start to understand a little bit of your manager's or boss's behavior. At least uh, I hope so. So before we start let's, let's talk a little bit about what kind of companies um, are, 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 are uh, uh, what kind of companies compose our economy. So how many of you work in a tech-based company? Raise so the majority. Um, and how, how many of those companies have, uh, are young, meaning 10 years or, or less? Okay, you are lucky, because those kind of companies were founded in, into a different area. Uh, an area of where people understand these concepts. And they can implement it better or worse, but at least they can relate with this issue. But most of our economy is made by non-tech companies. And in fact, if you are a service company, probably most of your clients are guys that don't understand nothing about innovation, technology, or, or a job. And this means that you will find uh, the decision makers of those companies to be guys that don't understand, that don't, they don't have a clue about what, what everything that I'm saying is about. And also, you, in those companies, you have a lot of people legacy. And when I'm talking about legacy, Probably the developers start to, to be uncomfortable, I understand their pains, but uh, you must trust me when I say that people legacy is worse than code legacy. Because there are a lot of people there that you cannot change, you don't have the time to train them, and you are st stick with them. So, despite all these challenges, most of these companies are looking for innovation. And by innovation, I mean to launch a new digital product, to have new ways of doing things internally, and this raises a lot of challenges. So, these are some success factors in implementing innovation. Uh, it's a HBR study, so you have to have a compelling case for innovation, meaning that that innovation must bring some value to the market. You need to have a flexible execution process. Uh, because you don't know up front, uh, since you are doing something you, know, you don't know up front all the things that you need to do. You need to have the support of the senior management because he, he has the money and the resources. You have to have the culture, the, the people and the willingness to take risks. And if you sum up this, all this stuff, you will end up with, uh, to, to do innovation you need a strategy, culture and people and the right product. So in a nutshell this is. And if you and probably you know this better than me, if you go to some of the Agile benefits, uh, you start to see that they are very much related 
with all the success factors that I told you before. So being interactive, well, quality, visibility, flexibility, the right product, the most enjoyable, all that stuff is really coupled with these success factors. And this seems okay and it makes sense, but most of my projects start like this. So some guy that saw a YouTube video or some article or saw some competition product, he wants to do the same, he wants to copy, he wants to innovate. But innovate without changing anything. <laughs> and uh, so you don't want to spend money, you don't want to change the culture, you don't want to hire people, you don't want to change anything, but you want to innovate. And uh, most of my, I think all of my projects started like this, okay? And these typically lead to this, okay? Uh, Friends And most of the child initiatives end up failing because of the lack of experiences, the clashes of culture, the lack of support, um, the lack of support for the transition, um, and also the, the communication problems. And one way of looking at this, to, to try to find the root cause of all this, is, is this iceberg of neurons. So, if you think about an organization as a, as a pyramid, you have here, uh, probably you guys are more or less here, uh, you have guys that are very operational and they know 100% of, of, of the issues of the organization. And as you go up in the pyramid, you start to lose knowledge about what is happening in the organization. And you end up here knowing 4% of the problems. And I will just stop here and ask your opinion. How many of you relate with this or at least agree in some extent with this? Raise your hand. Okay. Before I give you my opinion, let's discuss some of the struggles of a manager. And I will go through these this, uh, uh, five points. So, the budget course. It, this is very important. Uh, probably you know this, but this is more or less the structure of every organization. You have the shareholder, that is the guy that invests money uh, to the company and, and expects some extra money in short term or medium term. And this is the most, uh, the, the, the most simplest stakeholder because he always, he, he, this for him is an investor. And he lends this money to the board. And the board has this tough um, uh, job that is to ensure that they have a strategy to multiply money. And this is very hard sometimes because you have competition, you have a lot of limitations, but they manage to do this strategy and allocate resources. And by resources I mean money, people, etc. And you have a lot of different departments, probably your company has similar ones with different names, and the, the, the nicest thing to see here is that um, they are different. So you have departments that are more associated with money, and typically they, are, they have more influence over the board and you have guys that are more related with costs and I put, him, uh, put here development because most of the times they are here. Okay? So what is this curse? Uh, this curse is, is basically every, every company has a budget and this budget is negotiated once a year and it's really simple. You negotiate money uh, in exchange by commitment and outputs, and deliverables, and deadlines. And so, if you commit a lot, you will receive a lot of money. If you commit with less, you will receive less money. So, these guys here have a huge pie, and they are splitting it among all the departments, based on their commitment and their goals. Why is, is this important? Because throughout the year, and this normally happens between September and December, is when, is typically, is when your managers are really upset and in a bad mood because they are fighting for money and after you start the year every guy here and every team below them start to um, comply with the plan and comply with the plan and justify the money that, uh, they, that they are spending okay? so you will not have deliverables in January but you need to prove that you are spending the money right because you are, if you are spending the money wrong these guys here will cut your budget. Why is this, why is this important? Because 
it affects a lot the incentives for managers. So basically deadlines and goals are negotiated once a year. And after that, since you already exchanged the, the commitments to money, you cannot uh, go back. And this makes typically makes managers uh, think more about um, the plan and the compliance with the plan rather than on adaptability, on building the right product. And on top of that, they must be constantly reporting how they are and the deviation from the plan. And this means that this is, this is why uh, normally the, you need to allocate hours and all that stuff is, is to do this. So uh, basically, the performance of a project is not stable. You have peaks, ups and downs, and that is normal. But that, that, doesn't, fit, that doesn't quite fit the plan compliance. So typically managers find this, in, this uh, interesting way of, of manipulating the data. So they, they, are, they, they can prove that they, they are compliant with the plan without being compliant with the plan. Okay. Also this raises perverse incentives. Because I don't know if you know, but most of the manager bonus are related with the amount of money you save. So let's assume that I've committed to do this and now uh, with this money, and I was able to do this with this money. So this surplus will be divided between me and the company. So, as you can imagine, my mindset will be to save money, not to, to, to build a quality product. And this is completely uh, normal, because this is the incentive that normally companies uh, provide to managers. And as I said before, once a year, all the departments in the company fight among each other to have the largest slice of the pie. So the pie is fixed, the only thing that changes is the, the, the amount of money you allocate to each department. And this means that probably throughout the year, they will be still fighting to prove that the other guys deserve less money. So if you think about an organization where you have different teams that are working in opposite sides, you will start to see that this is very uh, a, 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 a struggle to, to, to conduct projects that involve all these departments. And finally, if you reach the end of the year and everything goes uh, according to plan and you save money, next year will be worse because the board will ask you more commitment with less money. So this circle, this uh, this this process uh, doesn't uh, as an end. And Going back to the job benefits, uh, conceptually they are very good, and I think all managers agree with that. But if you think about all the things that I said before, you start to see that there's a misalignment between what is valued by the company and what the job brings. And probably you see that most of the things that you see here are not that much valued at the end of the day. Okay? There are also another things that I, I, I want to other things that I want to discuss. First of all, most of these projects are run by people that don't have a clue about the innovation of technology, and this means that they have a huge knowledge a gap between uh, these guys and you. So this knowledge gap is very important because it will have a lot of, of consequences. And you guys, most of the time, and I'm sorry for stereotyping, most of the times. You don't know what to explain this to managers, and uh, either because it's complex, either because uh, you think it's very common sense, or either because you don't speak business language, and this raises trust issues. And trust, I think, is the most important ingredient on a job: is having trust on people. And uh, you can only develop trust. If you fully uh, engage with the system, if you fully understand the system, if you fully understand why, uh, uh, why, and how, and what, and since you have this knowledge gap between these two stakeholders, uh, they cannot develop trust, and this this is where they start to question where you are spending your time, uh, how many hours you take for lunch, all that things that you probably went through. Uh, so at some point in your life. And putting all this in the, in the shoulders of, of the product owner will not fix things. Because you 
can I have an amazing product owner, but the guy is just a guy. You will not do miracles. So you, you need to uh, uh, be uh, sure that everybody can develop trust, uh, even the, the CEO with every developer. And I'm sorry about the term that I use, but this is also a problem. Uh, and I'm talking against myself. I'm an engineer. We are trying to solve amazing puzzles. We are trying to experiment things. And often we end up in this egocentric exercise where we are experimenting just for the thrill of experimenting. And when a manager that is not an engineer sees that, the guy goes mad. It's really a turn off for him because he don't understand. If you, if you know what to develop in Java and you are good at it, why experimenting different languages? Be in the Java and stick with Java. And this is the mindset of a guy that is not an engineer. So pay attention to this because it, this often happens. And then there is this myth that everybody is self-driven, everybody is motivated, and everybody is a really nice guy and able to be autonomous. And this is it. I'm sorry to say this because talent is normally distributed in companies. And you have a minority of people, at least we expect that they they are the minority that are about the performance. And why I'm saying this is because although they are very uh, in number or in percentage, they are very um, they are a tiny part compared to the, the old. Those guys are the outliers that managers uses to question the system. So if you have a guy that doesn't deliver and doesn't have any schedule and then spend a lot of time in lunch, it can be one in a million. But the, the manager will use uh, them as an example to question all the system. And you will end up by, uh, by uh, <coughs> failing to implement a new system because of this kind of people. And, and you cannot fire them in project. Very hard. So, another thing that is important is that uh, most of the time things get worse before they, they get better. And this is normal because even people are working in a dysfunctional way for a while. They uh, develop tricks and tweaks so they, in, at the end of the day they will be able to deliver something. And as you start to change the way they do things, they will start to fail. And this means that the, the, top, man, the top man will start to doubt that you will end up in a better position. So this time here is very important because it's where people's, the septic start to appear and you start to be questioned. So uh, pay attention to this because it's not a straight way to help. So going back to this, I'm sorry for the guys that agree with this. I, for all the things that I said before, I prefer this video. So there's a lot of things that um, that conditionate the way managers act or think about all this, and uh, that are unknown to the staff, as well as there are problems that are uh, really painful for the staff that, that are unknown to the executives. This is why middle management is so important because those guys are the ones that have almost the, 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 the full picture and often they are neglected in the decision and, and all, that, all that stuff. So, a few tips. So, I, I've been implementing this for a while uh, now and uh, I can say that most of the times I've felt and this is good. At least for me, <laughs> because I've learned, uh, and uh, every time I face with this with this situation where people want innovate, innovation and want to do something new, and I, I, I bring to them a new, a new culture, a child and it's with Scrum and Kanban and all, and a lot of different things. Um, they are very true, but at the end of the day, it's very different. Uh, it's very difficult to sustain this for a while, and this kind of process normally take. Uh, two years or, or more to, to do in a traditional company. So, a few tips for you. Uh, I found out that before you start to do this transformation, you need to clearly have a healthy way of dealing with failure because you, you will fail. 
you will start to do something new and people are not used to do things that way and they will fail and so normally don't sell only the sexy part of this you will be uh, shitting people out because it, it will fail and, and you need to have this framework where failure is acceptable and you know how to deal with that and don't put all this responsibility in the shoulders of the product owner um, all the people should know and understand how you are working the sales, even the cleaning like and this is like a, a reciprocal commitment because you also need to know how the other departments are run so you can relate to them and this is where trust is developed okay? and so the, the, uh, a cool example of this is when I was the CEO of the hotel I, I had some struggles in explaining to, the, to my board um, how the software development team was working so they were, they were working in Agile for a while and the guys didn't quite understood that and all the, the issues that normally uh, came from, from this so I, I decided to put all the board uh, working in a job and I found out that this work, works very well so uh, if you think about putting them on a, on, a, on a training session or putting them watching videos will not work that much they need to understand how these tools are used with their own work and uh, things get better, uh, got better uh, and it was really amazing then and you guys uh, probably you guys that work in service or that have clients know that most of the clients don't uh, are not uh, tech based companies or are not software companies and you cannot force them to work in a ways that they are not comfortable uh, and uh, we had a previous session where we discussed how to run a, a scrum project in waterfall but more than that I think all the team and all the, the people involved must understand how the, how the client wants or works and what kind of measurements of su success he has and because that will affect the way you work and the way you implement a job and all the things that are related with this. Uh, don't be done that. Um, I often see people that come to these meetings and learn some new concepts and think that this is like the Bible. And they stick with this despite of everything that surrounds them. So, question yourself, be humble. These are guidelines. These are things that you should reflect upon. Them. And you should see what is surrounding you and don't take everything from granted. But at the same time, don't start to change things just for the sake of changing. These kind of frameworks are uh, built with, in a holistic way. So if you start to uh, uh, take pieces out and put your own customized pieces, you will end up with a friend inside. And probably you will fail, not because of the, of the virtues of the framework, but because you uh, thought that you are more intelligent than the guys that uh, came up with this, with this framework. And then the hardest part. Trust should not be given from granted. So let's imagine the time you are a new guy at my company, and I'm, I'm telling you that we don't have schedules, we can't take infinite holidays, we, I will only look to results, all that stuff that is nowadays typical in every software company. And let's assume that in your first day you take vacations, in your second day you will take three hours to lunch. And without giving me something, something back, without having the time to develop trust with you, you are already taking it. So, this is not a good way to, to manage uh, our relationship and managers are very strict with this so you need to develop trust before you start to take something out of a company and often people neglect this and also results are uh, all this is a mean to an end reaching results and this is quite 
confusing because you normally you I'm sorry I'm stereotyping uh, you normally confuse results with effort and they don't, they don't are the same thing meaning that results are things that are valuable for the guys that you are working to and this means that if you work a lot extra hours and you will end up with a nice speed with all the backlog or the sprint backlog done but at the end of the day that is not a tangible value for the client you failed and I can give you a, a, an example from this side let's imagine that it's the end of the month and you are uh, uh, waiting for your salary and I go talk with you guys and say okay I've put in a, uh, a lot of effort I made much more phone calls to clients than I did uh, last month but I don't have money to pay it's the same thing happening in the opposite direction so and, and most of you guys probably will not be able to or will not be open to work or to, to get paid based on uh, story twice so uh, results must appear and this is very important because probably your boss need those results to to collect money from the board and as I said before all of this is, is very good but will not be a, a perfect uh, path you will fail a lot, I failed a lot in fact uh, most of the times as I said I failed and a child requires a continuous focus on improvement and uh, that can be demanding uh, for some people and for, for some organizations so I like to see a job like this it's not something tangible it's not something that it's not a, a, a state where, that you can reach because nobody and everybody is a job in some way so it's, it's a constant uh, struggle to to adapt, to be, become more and more productive and also to, to transform the way you, you think and the way the, all the stakeholders involved think so to finish up before the questions and I, I would like to have many questions because I, I think I, I touched some, some pain points uh, I would like to, to talk about Meta we are a product house um, and we don't uh, we like we like to see ourselves as the guys that try to master the art of building products and by this I mean uh, technology, UX, business, marketing um, and if we look at our site we have a lot of, of, of different products in fact we have our own product that went to the web summit and we are going to to, to an acceleration program in Berlin uh, next month so it's running well um, Drop me a line. I, I, I'm pretty much active in, in some, some in LinkedIn polls. I have some articles there that might interest you. Something. All, all of them are related with these issues. Um, so drop me a line and uh, give me your thoughts about this.